Hi, I'm Sam Barlow. I'm the developer of the game Her Story, uh, which just won the Grand Jury Prize here at IndieCade. Her Story is a police procedural game in which you get to search through a police database full of video clips that cover there's hundreds of clips covering a series of interviews with a woman about her missing husband. So when I decided to make an independent game, I really wanted to keep hold of, like I have a love of writing for performers, using performers in games, and moving into the independent space and not having millions of, bud of dollars for like motion capture and things like that. It was really important to me that performance would still be at the heart of the game. And during the kind of development phase of the game, I was watching lots of video footage of real life police interviews. And that seemed to be an important moment for me, just the way in which video is used now by the news media and that kind of whole link into true crime. And so the idea came to me that I could make this game and have the game revolve around the video footage of this woman being inter interrogated. And that would be a way within a kind of independent game budget to have this kind of a high quality performance that would kind of lead to a, a, a heightened intimacy and this kind of feeling of authenticity to the game. So the experience that I wanted to give people with her story was I really wanted to have a game that focused on subtext and a lot of writing for video games really struggles with subtext because if you're asking the player to be kind of directly involved in the world often the kind of story and your kind of instructions to the player are kind of caught up in each other and so it feels wrong to have things embedded in the subtext and as well if you're working with kind of traditional CGI trying to get the quality of performance where that subtext can come through in the performance that can be really expensive or really challenging so for me the idea of using the video was that we could have this game where actually like the majority of content is buried in this character's subconscious, it's in the subtext of the writing, and by having it revolve around the performance of Viva, our, our main actress, that's something that can come across, and so the big part of the game mechanic here, the big part of how you play this game, is that you're inferring context, you're trying to understand what's going on inside this woman's head, and the performance is the way that you get to do that. The, yeah, the game has essentially a single storyline that you're unlocking so there isn't like a huge amount of branching or anything like that a sort of traditional idea of how a game would be replayable but the way in which you unlock that story and the prominence that we have for the player's imagination actually kind of joining the dots and figuring out what's going on in the story means that your journey through that story and the way you discover it ends up being quite personal to you as a player and there's an element of your interpretation and your reaction to some of the story events which gives people kind of a unique personal angle on the story so it's it's less about here is a game that is deeply replayable it's a game that will take you between two and five hours usually to play but that two and two to five hours will be this very intense personal intimate experience where this story feels like it's something that you're taking part in the creation of I didn't realize necessarily that I'd made an FMV game until I think the first time I took it to a show and people were like, oh, why have you made an FMV game? That's not just like a dead genre, that's like a bad genre. And so that kind of forced me to think about, is this an FMV game and why is it different to other FMV games? And I think the key difference to that kind of, that bad historical stuff is that with those games, they were trying to replicate a kind of real-time game experience using filmed footage, which naturally kind of creates a bad traditional game experience whereas her story is very different because her story the whole game is the video and it's about interrogating the video and a lot of the things that are problems with traditional video so you know uh, the difficulty in creating something that's continuous um, the lack of kind of personal agency these are actually things that work to its advantage with her story because it's about trying to kind of piece this thing together. The story is deliberately and overtly non-linear. And just the, you know, the way the video is used, like I say, it's, it's a reaction to the prevalence of video in our kind of modern media diet. So VR, I think, is something that interests me quite a lot. What I love about VR is the fact that we're gonna have to throw out a lot of the traditional rules of what makes a video game. 
So I think what a frustration I used to have working in the traditional video game space was just how rigid the templates are and how rigid the genres are. So that you know, if you're making a game, it can only be 10% different to the other games that have come before it. And I think the excitement with VR is suddenly a lot of the conventional mechanics don't seem applicable. So we're thinking about experiences which are more exploratory, more kind of voyeuristic, can involve you more perhaps as a spectator than as a kind of direct actor. And so that's something I'm really interested in exploring. And I think it'll be interesting to see how the VR market works and, and how readily it kind of embraces those new experiences. Uh, so the game has been a big, a big commercial success for me. Um, I kind of had expectations of how much I could sell. And then in the first month, we sold over 100,000 copies and continues to sell pretty strongly now. So it's, it's been really, really satisfying to me to see that there's an audience for this out there. Because I think a big part of her story was an experiment to see, is there an audience for a game which promotes the imagination, which is set in a genre and tells a kind of story that most video games don't? And clearly the kind of the success of it has proven that there is an audience out there. And you know, it's an audience that is composed of traditional gamers who are interested in something new, um, as well as lots of people who don't convention don't normally play games and have come to this. And because of its ease of access, because it's well, a different experience, because the kind of central metaphor of crime fiction, of interrogating this police database is something that people can get that kind of gives them an easy in to experience the game. Uh, so right now I'm finishing up, uh, just kind of taking the game out there and showing it around and thinking about what's next. I think now that I've found this audience and I've kind of proven there is a space for something like this, I'd like to build on that, grow the audience. So not necessarily repeating the trick with something very similar to her story, but I think building on the way it uses the imagination the fact that it tells a story in a genre and a type of story, types of characters that are not traditionally seen in video games, I think that's something that's going to be important to me moving forward.